and welcome to part two of my gigantic summer book haul. This is going to be part with young adult novels and I have... Hmm, let's see how many books I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have 24 books to go through, so let's just get on with it. The first book that I have here is this tiny teeny mass market paperback, something which I don't usually buy often. This is Storm Glass by Maria V. Snyder. This is book number one in her either trilogy or series and it has nothing to do with a poison study series but I think it might be set in a similar world or maybe even the same world. I honestly don't know much about this book. Um, the only reason why I got it was because I signed up for Harlequin Press uh, rewards and I had enough rewards to redeem for a single paperback so this was what I got because it was cheap enough and also by the author that at least I heard of. So this is a YA fantasy story about the girl who's a glassmaker but all those glasses are not just simple glasses they can contain magic and apparently something goes wrong. This is all I knew about the story and I just find it very cute I got it for free essentially. I um, find it very cute. I haven't had a um, mass mar market paperback recently, but <laughs> I found something which I haven't seen in a while. And this is like uh, an insert in the middle of the book, which is also like, a, you know, one of those vouchers and subscriptions. I don't know, like the book was not published that long time ago. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it was published in 2009. And it's not like it, it's been. 10, 20 or whatever like 30 years ago, but yeah, anyway, I got it if anyone read this book or anything by Maria V. Snyder because I have not read anything by her yet uh, Please let me know down below because I'm very curious about this book So I've been quite on the streak of fairy tale retellings. That's why I got this book This is Stray by Elisa Sussman. And I believe it's also book number one in a trilogy of fairy tale retellings I'm not sure which one in this case doesn't really say anywhere, but it was only six bucks plus there was a promotion at Indigo. I think you had to buy five books for 20 bucks or something like this. It was incredibly cheap, but it was even cheaper than this one. And I decided to pick this one up, so I hope it will not disappoint. I kind of skimmed through it and I felt it was okay. So I will see. Next at Indigo, also at this amazing price, I got Other Band by Karine. Divis. Um, I actually read this book a year and a half ago. This is a story about a boy and a girl who exist in two different worlds. The boy exists in our world and the girl exists in a fantasy world, but they are connected through a mental link. Um, and whenever Nolan closes his eyes, he sees everything through her eyes. And when she falls asleep, she sees everything through like his world. It's a very interesting YA fantasy story. It is a standalone. It is written by own voices. There is a bisexual character in it. Um, there is also um, a disabled character. So there is a lot of representation in this book. I remember when I read it, I think I gave it about three stars. I felt that there were some parts of it which were not developed really well but at the same time it's such a unique setting that it got me thinking about where does our mind go when we suffer through um, like a shock or when we lose consciousness or when we have like um, something like an epilepsy. What happens there when you have a stroke? So this is in a way the book that kind of twists and gives like a fantasy element to um, what happens when we are not present. Maybe we go to a different world. Who knows? So I decided to purchase this book just because I liked it. Like it was not my favorite but it's so unique and it's so original that I wanted kind of to give this book a home and plus it was incredibly cheap which made me very happy. So yeah, check this one out. I, If I find my uh, review I will link it down below. 
Next, I have another book that I kind of was interested in getting from the library when, when I saw it in Indigo for the same special price. I couldn't just help not buying it. And this is Into the Dim by Jeanette B. Taylor. And this is a YA fantasy but also time travel story. And I really don't know anything about it. Oh, it's so shiny. I don't really know anything about it. I just know that it's a YA and also time travel. And um, I decided to, to pick this one up. So if you read it, please let me know if you liked it or not. Um, hopefully I will not be disappointed. Next, I have this book, which is A Quarry of Wings and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. This is book number three in her um, Quarry of Thorns and Roses series, I believe. So um, if you have been following me for a while, you probably know that I tend to buy Sarah J. Maas books without actually reading them. So yeah, I have not read a single book by her, but I keep buying them. I actually pre-ordered this book and now I feel really stupid because when I did pre-order it back I think in February I had all intention to read first two books in the series but I never got around to it and now I have three books and I have not read a single one so oops Next, I have The Crown's Fade, which is book number two in the duology by Evelyn Skye. So the first one was The Crown's Game, and I was really, really, really critical um, about that book. I'll provide the link to my review down below. I gave that book three stars, and I was very vocal about the fact that I did not like the way um, the author um, described some parts of the culture and there were a lot of blunders when it came to the language but I still wanted to read this second book so damn much so I pre-ordered it and unfortunately I have not read it yet but I'm definitely looking forward to it I wanted to um, reread book number one and I actually got book number one is an audiobook from Overdrive, but I couldn't even get through like five minutes of it because the narrators decided to portray the characters with absolutely atrocious accents. It was so, so bad that I just had to return it immediately. I couldn't go through it. I just couldn't. But I'm very excited about this one. I really hope that this one is better and I'm keeping all of my fingers crossed that there are no more language blunders in this one. God, how difficult it is to hire someone to double check things. Like seriously. Next I have a book that I was kind of on the fence whether I wanted to order it or not. So I waited till it was out and then I ordered it. And that is The Love Interest by Kayla Dietrich. Actually, I have already read this book and I really enjoyed it even though I gave it only three stars. Um, there were some parts of this book which were very raw, especially the ending. Um, there were a lot of copy editorial mistakes in this book, especially in the second half. And it drove me insane when I was reading it, but I did enjoy it. I thought the first half was completely hilarious, very satirical, very, very, like, incredibly funny. But the second part was kind of meh, and the ending was a bit... Yeah, um, I'll provide the link to my review down below, but I still enjoyed while I was reading it, and I'm happy to have it. Next, I have another book which I got for the special deal at Indigo, and that was Vengeance Road by Erin Bowman. Um, I got this book out of the library a year ago, and I did not read it, but uh, my friend Becca um, keeps telling me that I should read it, and she really likes it. So this is a YA um, Western. I have never read a Western. I don't think I've ever read a Western story. I cannot really recall unless you consider the gunslinger to be a bit of a western uh probably not but anyway so i'm looking forward to reading this one and i absolutely love the cover it's like a super adorable cover um and also the price was so good so no regrets next i have another book which i got on sale and this is wolf by wolf by ryan grodden if i I remember correctly, this is a YA, kind of like a magical realism type of story or a retelling, so to say, about a girl who enters a contest to kill Hitler. Huh. I try to avoid everything that has to do with the Second World War or Hitler because this is probably my least favorite part of the history whatsoever. I don't want to, like, I don't really like it. 
but this is a YA and also retelling and a lot of people said that it's a very good book so I decided to pick this one up we'll see if not I'll probably just return it to and donate it to the library next I have a copy of the book which surprise I never had as a physical copy and this is more happy than not by Adam Silvera um, obviously, probably everyone read this book, but I'll just do a very quick recap. This is a contemporary slash sci-fi slash magical realism story about the boy who decides to um, go undergo procedure to erase part of his memories because he's, um, uh, part of his life is very tragic. He lost his father to suicide. He also contemplates uh, contemplates suicide himself uh, because he discovers that he might be gay, and he want to he wants to kind of forget this part of his life. And also, he lives in extreme poverty. And um, this book gave me so many feelings. I read it about uh, two years ago, year and a half, when it came out and I absolutely loved it. I have a review on my blog that I'm going to link down below. I had this book on my Kindle, but since I have um, Adam's second book, I actually got it signed by Adam at BookCon and I have already pre-ordered his next book. I decided to get this one and at BookCon, for whatever reason, they didn't have hardbacks and I really wanted this one as a hardback. So I finally got it and I'm super happy about it. So now I can have them all on my shelf. Next, I have two books by the same author and that is Maria Devana Hadley. This is Magonia and the second book in the series, Airy. I listened to Magonia as an audiobook um, about two or three months ago, uh, maybe more, I think it was April. So I listened to Magonia and I absolutely loved it as an audiobook. It was kind of underappreciated, I feel, because very few people talk about those books. They've been out for quite a few years, but nobody ever mentions them anymore. So I listened to an audiobook. I loved it. I gave it four stars. It was one of my favorite audiobooks of this year. And I really wanted to dive into the second audiobook, but I never had a physical copy of this book. And when I saw both these books in hardbacks uh, at Book Outlet, I snatched them because they were super cheap. They're not very big books. And the covers, look at those. I think this covers a gorgeous, so I'm very happy to have this book. So I have not read book number two. I'll probably pick it up as an audiobook as well, unless it's not available on Overdrive, but otherwise I'm very happy to have these ones. You see, my book haul this time is actually reasonable. I got only books that I wanted to get, you see? Next, I have another book that I read about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, and I never had a physical copy of, and this is Anything Could Happen by Will Walton. This book gave me the same warm and fuzzy feeling as Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Um, Becky's book is more fluffy and more... Um, yeah, more fluffy and more adorable than this one. This one has a bit of a dark theme to it as well, but still, it's a very nice book. It is a contemporary book, coming of age, coming out, fall in love for the first time, fall in love with a best friend. It's uh, one of those books that I really enjoyed and I kept thinking about, so I will definitely want to reread this book at some point. I've been waiting to get this book as a hardback as well, so finally it became available at Book Outlet and I got it. Next, I have Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell, and I don't really know much about this book except for it is a YA, it is fantasy, and it has to do with traveling and sea creatures. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. I have another book by Lisa Maxwell that I'm really looking forward to reading, and I decided to pick this one up because I've been trying to get it from the library and I would get it from the library and then return it and then get it again and then return it. I don't know when this happens I need to buy my own copy because this would be like a vicious cycle that would never end. So this is what I did and thank you Book Outlet for making your books so cheap. Next I have another new release that everyone is raving about and I cannot wait to get to. This is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is a YA um, adventure slash mystery slash coming of age slash set in Victorian times. 
um, and I cannot wait to read it. I heard from a lot of people that this is an amazing book. Actually, a lot of people recommended me to listen to this as an audio, which I'm going to do as well, but I'm so happy to have it in a physical form, and I cannot wait to read it. It's just, I'm so sad that I'm going on vacation, and I'm leaving so many good books behind. Ah... And of course, of course, while I was in the middle of filming, my battery ran out of juice. So here's me, two hours later, continuing with this video. Ah, vlogger's life. Anyway, now you know why there is a change in lighting, because we are around 8.30 p.m. right now. It's really dark outside, but let's just get on with it. And the next book that I have here is The Forgetting by Sharon Cameron. This is book number one in her duology. I think it's a duology, technically speaking. Um, when I was at BookCon, I was lucky enough to get The Knowing, which is a book number two, or um, a companion novel, how she called it. So while I was getting it signed, Sharon asked me if I read The Forgetting, and I said no, but I plan to. She said, yeah, definitely read it before you read The Knowing, because they're connected. So I was waiting to get myself a paperback, since I have a paperback of the ARC, and it actually came out in June, and I think I even received it before the release date, which was pretty awesome, but I have not read it yet. But I really like... Oh, I know that there is a lot of reflection right now, but I really like this cover, and I like how they're like the trees. Honestly, I don't know anything about it, except for it is YA and fantasy. And I really like Sharon's work. Um, I read it about two years ago, and I thought it was... A pretty cool setting, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. Next, I have a copy of The Shadow Shaper by Daniel Jose Older, and this is a YA urban fantasy. Um, it has the person of color, and it was recommended as a diverse read multiple times at Indigo. I was a bit hesitant to pick this one up because I didn't hear anyone talk about it on BookTube or anywhere else. But then I saw it on sale at Book Outlet like for really cheap, so I decided to pick it up and give it a go. It is book number one in the trilogy, I believe. I'm not sure if it's going to be trilogy or duology, but I think book number two is coming out soon, or maybe it's out already. But this book has been out since, I think, 2015? Yeah, 2015. So. Um, if anyone read it, please let me know down below because I honestly know nothing about this book. Next, I have a book that I was super excited about and the moment that I knew it was available for pre-order, I did pre-order it. And this is Dawn Among the Sticks and Bones. This is book number two in the... I don't know if it's going to be trilogy or series, but um, it is by Sean and Maguire. And the first book, Every Heart Get Doorway, was absolutely amazing. I loved that book. And ever since I read it a year ago, I think, or about a year ago, everyone has been talking about that book. And it really warms my heart because I thought Ever Heart of Doorway was such an amazing story. It is um, a bit of more of a magical realism than a fantasy because it is about, the book number one is about children who come back from fiction, uh, well, fantasy worlds, say Wonderland or Neverland, and and those are the kids who return from the, those worlds and how they adapt to back to reality. And there is a school spe set up specifically for those kids to kind of bring them back into the real world. So book number one was very, in some ways, creepy, in some ways, whimsical, in some ways, it was very, um, you know fantasy-like and only like fairy tale like it was very well written it it is a very short book the same goes for this one um, almost like a novella length um, this is the sequel to it I don't know what it's about I don't know what it like what characters it would have but I'm super excited to have it I just cannot wait to read it but I think I might actually reread book number one and then read this one and I know that we're getting book number three sometime I believe next next spring I want to say I'm not sure but I'm super excited and as always an amazing and creepy color love it 
Okay, let's try without glasses. Next, I have the 20th anniversary edition of the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. And this is the Hufflepuff edition because apparently I'm a Hufflepuff. Well, I did the sorting back in the day when Pottermore opened its doors and I got Ravenclaw. And I was very confused about it because I never felt like Ravenclaw per se, even though I do have traits of Ravenclaw. And I kept thinking, no, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. Then I retook the test and I got a Hufflepuff. And then I took another test and I got a Hufflepuff again. And recently I retook the test again and I was still a Hufflepuff. And I do feel like Hufflepuff, even though I wish I were something more cool like Gryffindor or a Slytherin, but I'm definitely, definitely a Hufflepuff, so I had to get this edition. Yellow is probably my least favorite color. I hate yellow, but this badger is absolutely adorable, and I just, I wish I could have all of the editions. Hopefully we'll get more editions, um, like other books in the series, and this just, uh, my Harry Potter is like all different copies. I think I have the first four books as a, or maybe five books from Scholastic UK. I have a uh, book number six is a hardbound um, adult cover, and book number seven is a hardbound completely different cover, so none of my covers match, so this one will be another one in the mismatch family of Harry Potter books, but I'm super excited to have it. Next, I have several copies of Victoria Schwab's books, and initially when I got her A Darker Shade of Magic book one and two, I got them in UK covers. So when A Conjuring of Light was coming out, I pre-ordered it from Book Depository and got it while I was away on vacation in US. But then when I was in the line for the signing at BookCon, I realized that they didn't have any books that I really wanted. Like they didn't have Vicious, they didn't have any arcs, they only had um, Conjuring of Light as a hardbound and I was like, okay, but I have already have copies, like UK copies of books one and two. It's kind of weird to get book number three as a US hardback while you have everything in UK paperback. So I still got A Conjuring of Light as a hardback, but it was really bothering me and I completely forgot that I had this book pre-ordered. So because of that, when I saw on Book Outlet these two books available as hardbacks in US editions, I got them. Um, they are all in perfect condition except for this one came with a bit of... I don't know if you can even see it. It's just a, sl a little rip in the cover. So I got these ones from Book Outlet, so obviously they were way cheaper. And now I have A Darker Shade of Magic both in UK paperbacks and US hardbacks, which is super exciting, but a bit too much, to be honest. Um, it was like a, I don't know, spur of the moment decision, but I do love both covers. I cannot really pick which one is my favorite, so I'm going to keep all of them for now. Next, I have another book by Victoria Schwab, and this is our Dark Duet, which I really hoped to get at BookCon, and they didn't have any copies, even though it was just a week before the release date. So I got this one just from pre-ordered at Amazon, and I have already started to read it, but I had to put it aside for another project. But um, I really want to read it. It's one of my most anticipated, anticipated releases of this summer. And this is book number two and the last book in her duology, The Monsters of Verity. Obviously, I cannot wait to read it and super cool cover. I must say that UK editions also have amazing covers. She's so lucky because all of her editions have just amazing covers. And I know that recently she announced that uh, Vicious will have a sequel, which is called Vengeance, I believe, and they will be, they will re-release Vicious in a new hardback, which I'm super excited because I have Vicious only as a UK paperback edition, and I never got Vicious in US hardback because I didn't like the cover. So hopefully new covers will be pretty awesome, and yeah, super stoked about this book as well. And the last but definitely not least is this book, which I really hope to get my like my hands on. 
in some other way, but eventually I gave up and just ordered it from, I believe, Amazon. And this is because you love to hate me. This is 13 Tales of Villainy by most well-known YA authors. And there are so many of my favorites. Guys, seriously, Susan Dennard and Marissa Meyer, I wouldn't call her particularly my favorite, but I like her writing. Victoria Schwab is my favorite, and Adam Silvera is here. Andrew Smith is also my favorite. April Genevieve Tachalki is my favorite. Nicola Yoon. Seriously, guys, I was dying to read this book. I even picked it, I believe, for the Booktubeathon readathon, but I never started it and I really regret it because now I don't have time before my vacation sucks. Ah, and this cover is freaking stunning. Absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to read it because, yes. So yeah, guys, this is it. This is part two of my huge summer book haul. And these are all the YA books that I got. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down below which ones you have read. And I'll see you very soon in part three. Bye. can't say I really like this line, plus I was lying in bed for like two hours reading, so yeah, my hair is all flat, but whatever. Okay, I cannot even see my own eyes. There's so much shadow everywhere. I don't know. Maybe I should take off my glasses. Well, now you can all see the bags under my eyes. Oh wow, I cannot talk anymore. It's really hard, guys. It's really hard. I'm putting my glasses back for the ending of this video.